the thing about Bugliosi. Um, you know, if you can get to the crux of the matter immediately, eliminate all the twigs on the tree, go through the bushes, you want to find the big tree and find the trunk of the big tree. Uh, there's no need to be distracted by the little vine tangling down from the limb of the neighboring tree. It goes straight to the trunk of the tree in regard to the arguments raised by the prosecutor. Well, you got to admit, a trial lawyer is an actor, okay? Uh, as in the case of the O.J. Simpson trial. You don't present evidence. That's a lie. Uh, Bugliosi and a uh, typical prosecutor or defense attorney put on a performance in order to push the buttons of the jury. Uh, that's why, you know, Bugliosi constantly harps about the blood in Iraq. The cold bodies of the dead soldiers decomposing in the grave. See, that's really immaterial. What he, if he was really uh, upfront and honest and legitimate, which is, you know, never the case in the real world. Bugliosi would say, here is why I know George Bush uh, misled Congress, misled the people of the United States, okay, um, he pretends to do that, and uh, he does indicate uh, the basis of his argument, but he buries it in the jungle of emotional appeal, and most people will be baffled by two aspects, the emotionalism, such as if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Acquit. You know, that the O.J. Simpson trial uh, charade party show. Uh, and bringing in, for example, Mark Furman may be a racist. The detective who uh, investigated the O.J. Simpson murder scene uh, may be a racist. He might have planted evidence because he doesn't like Negroes. See why? So Bugliosi, of course, is doing similar things to baffle and confuse what he hopes will be a simple-minded, gullible, emotional jury. In this case, the voters of the United States. The trunk of the tree. What is the basis of his argument? Uh, make it plain. I'm going to use an analogy. Uh, I rent uh, a trailer space on a piece of property, a beautiful piece of property uh, in South Mississippi. And um, it's owned by a family. I'm going to call them the Jones family. Uh, it's basically uh, an elderly man and woman. And uh, that, wouldn't you know it, <laughs> beautiful uh, uh, Tammy Jones, wouldn't you know it, uh, single. Uh, beautiful single Tammy Jones. Okay, now, Tammy Jones feels responsible for this piece of property, which uh, uh, includes six or eight dwellings that are rented out, including the space that I rent out. And uh, suppose she was suspicious of something. Suppose she was wanting information in order to make a decision. Now, I'm talking about the trunk of the tree, Bugliosi's argument, and uh, in reference to George Bush and the information provided him by the CIA. If Tammy Jones wanted to know what happened uh, on a certain piece of property or a certain uh, one of the apartments she rents out, um, in order to make a decision, maybe she wanted to evict, maybe she was thinking of evicting a tenant, or maybe something was stolen and she wanted to know who may have stolen it and what to do. As, uh, as a consequence of this theft. Uh, and, and if Tammy Jones uh, asked my opinion about the matter, I can provide her with my opinion. And if she went to Pedro, the, the other neighbor, and asked his opinion, do you know anything about what happened in such and such a place at such and such a time? Uh, Pedro uh, would give his opinion. And uh, she might uh, talk to somebody at the local grocery store and get a third source of information upon which uh, to base a decision regarding an incident, you know, hypothetical incident regarding uh, 
the property that she is somewhat responsible for. Uh, she is by no means legally bound to abide by the, the advice of none of us. Uh, we provide her with um, a consensus opinion. The consensus opinion may be that uh, Dirty Larry is the one who uh, left the uh, the fish guts and scales and uh, crawdad hulls uh, on the ground and the beer cans. It, it was Dirty Larry that did that. That's the consensus opinion. Of, that's the culprit. That's what we tend to believe. Uh, However, I voice my reservations. I'm not sure it was really Dirty Larry that did it. Tammy Jones makes a decision. After hearing our advice, and we even uh, are so helpful, we actually uh, provide her with um, recommendations of what she should do, You know, even though she doesn't ask or need it. Maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. And so she decides to, um, whatever she does, evict uh, Dirty Larry, or whatever she does. She's not bound to abide by our advice. Uh, now, in the case of the President of the United States, uh, he gets the advice and consent of the Congress. Mainly th because they uh, control the purse strings. And so... Uh, he might, a president could mislead Congress uh, and cause them to uh, open the, the um, money bag and take out a few coins to, for his, the purpose that he wants to pursue. But, if the president got the consensus opinion of several intelligence agencies in regard to the probability of um, likelihood that Saddam has weapons of mass destruction and may use them, the president is not bound to obey the advice of his informers, the CIA, the military intelligence, whoever else they may be, several of the department heads, a bunch of bureaucrats, frankly. Mainly, they're a bunch of bureaucrats that follow this procedures and file papers all day long. Some few of them actually uh, uh, go uh, physically to um, foreign countries and get in a motel room and uh, and watch CNN because it turns out that the best way to gather intelligence is to just simply watch it on CNN. And uh, guess who did what? You know, you don't really know in a lot of cases. And you got spy satellites looking, but you don't see everything. And you have people eavesdropping electronically, but you don't hear everything. And you're always guessing. That's the nature of um, in intelligence gathering. George Bush may have been convinced, may not have been convinced. He may have been convinced that Saddam was a threat. He, but he was by no means obligated to abide by any consensus opinion provided uh, him uh, through the collection of intelligence agencies. That's the trunk of the tree. That's the basis of Bugliosi's Buglio, uh, argument that um, Saddam was innocent and had no weapons of mass destruction, and there was no potential whatsoever that he would ever use them or give them to uh, terrorists to use against the United States. And there was absolutely no justification whatsoever to invade. But guess what? <laughs> the president can invade anywhere he wants to at any time he wants to, and if the Congress doesn't like it, they cut off the money. The, the president is called the commander-in-chief. He's in, uh, the, in charge of the military. He has the, the world's greatest army, and he is the policeman of the world, like it or not. 